remember that. Go Georgia. Yes, January meeting of the Cleveland Town Council comes to order. Uh, please join with me in a moment of silence. so much and crime we live out here we're not as insulated from it as we used to be anymore no ma'am no ma'am and, and i'll be pretty well there's a lot of things that have not helped and, and um, uh, part of it is that it's a much smaller world than it used to be you know, and, and when you went to richmond in the 60s it was a big deal it took you an hour and a half to get to richmond <coughs> now you're there in 35 minutes technically you know, on the outskirts 
the traffic uh, patterns of drug uh, drug gangs, for example, goes from Petersburg out to Roanoke and from uh, Rocky Mount up to Roanoke, so that we get a lot of traffic uh, into pass and through on some of the characters. You know, I, I know I had recently, um, well, in the last few months, had gone to the police chief and mentioned that I had a client mm -hmm. that had said that she watches a drug deal go down almost daily in front of her house. In this town? In this town. Where at? Um, over by, you know the little neighborhood that's back behind um, Woodland? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. I got a phone call today about that. Okay. Um, she said she can sit at her door, and I can share with you even later, but at any rate, she can sit at her door, and almost daily, around 3 o'clock, there's a car that drives up, parks about half a block to a block away from her house, Windows are rolled down, somebody comes out, they exchange packages, somebody goes inside and the car drives away. And my, she first, says, my first question is, has she called the police? She has. Has she but, called the sheriff's she, but, And as I went to the police department, and what I was told was that they're overwhelmed. I mean, the police department is overwhelmed, and they just don't have the manpower to sit out there. In other words, just to sit and wait mm -hmm. day after day to wait for for this to transpire because I said, well, is it happening every day? And she said, an awful lot of days, you know, it happens a lot. Well, I get what the police department's saying because they're, you know, they're saying I can't sit out there for, we can't take up. Yeah, but if we've got a spot we can look at, this, uh, I'm going to ask the town manager to ask the chief of police to orchestrate a meeting with the drug task force, head of the local drug task force, and I want to meet with them personally uh, as well as many members of the council wishes to be in that, they should be in that as well. But uh, we're with you on that. I mean, there's got to be a crackdown, and I, I, but we're not alone, and we're not the only game Sure, in town. I mean, drugs are, or epidemic proportions, we all know that. I know, but, but, it, but it, all, it all contributes. Robberies, for example, local robberies. The, the, the Domestic local violence, local. everything yeah. feeds back to our drug problems. Sure. So, but that is a particular place, and I can ask the lady again and see if it it continues to go on, but last time I spoke to her, she said this has been going on for a very long time. Well, uh, does she know who it is? No. She, and I, I said, well, can you try to get the license plate number off the plate? She said, it's, it's just too far away. It's just out, I'm sorry. It's just out of distance a little bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> Susan, I thought they were whistling at you. Well, I'm sure they were. <laughs> um, but we'll take that and we'll we'll spread the meeting with the drug task force. Uh, the and drug if you task want me to check board. back with the lady and, and yeah, I'd like I'd like to know if it's still going on. Uh, and if it, if it is, why hadn't she called the police? Well, she has. Uh, she ha I, has. I I think she has. Huh? Has she filed a complaint? Probably not. Okay. No, the lady. She. Um, Part of the part of the process, a lot of folks don't get this. They think they just call the police. That's that's it. But you actually have to file a complaint in a lot of cases. Now, this in this particular case, we're going to follow up on it because they they haven't done it on her property. She has no complaint she can file, from what I can tell. Yeah, I mean, yeah. to me, it would seem that like she would. Yeah, I mean, she can say I'm noticing that <coughs> this activity is going on down the street routinely, but. It's not happening in her doors. Would, would she allow me to sit in her? Ask her this: If she'd allow me to sit in her house? Oh, I can tell you she with, would. Well, with tell the, me when you want to go there. So I'll well, just tell her to be ready. I'll sit out with binoculars and get me a license plate. That's what it takes. That's and, fine. Mary, what are you going to do? I want. I'm going to turn it over to the drug task force. <laughs> <laughs> she she would be more than willing to. Quite frankly, I I'd be more than willing to sit out there with a set of binoculars to find out who it is. Okay, I. It's kind okay, of well, well, and her house key. is a perfect view. I mean, it's a perfect house to sit at. Well, that's that's key element. She can see it happening, but if, if she can get a license plate and make Where a model of the car. Second Street. Uh, Second Street. Um, I know she's on, um, you know, there's Woodland, there's Woodland yeah. and then there's that little neighborhood behind. She's in that little neighborhood right behind. Okay. And, you know, that's a perfect, actually, that's a perfect little neighborhood for that type of activity to go on because. It's not routinely driven by, and you know, just the locals are there. And well, I'd call the Second Street Extension. Yeah. I don't. It's in not the curve. Safe. Huh? In the curve. Probably the past the curve. Right. Right. Past. Past. Where the no. state trooper lives. <laughs> past. Past the curve. <laughs> past the curve. But. Well, I had a call today yeah, from a woman from McKinney who owned, who knows somebody over there, and she was calling because this woman was complaining about 
drug sales going on and partying and the, um, and uh, got another thing, cussing, well, cussing and whatnot. And uh, I asked her if you know who the lady was, and she wouldn't tell me. I said, "Well, ma'am, you're McKinney. I'm in Crew. I can, you know, I work for Crew Citizens. If she will contact me, we can at least bring it to the attention of the appropriate folks and see what we can do about it." Uh, so this is the second thing. She's come to me several times and said, Susan, I kind of know this is going on, and I, you know, so. Yeah, I know. I hear you. Okay. I mean, I think all of us at some point have seen something like that, where we might think that's what's going on, and probably is. But, again, my experience, yeah, we're aware of it. We're watching them. We're trying to get somebody in there to have to make a buy. She said it usually happens around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, yeah. Okay. Good. Any other delegations from the public? Very good. We'll move on to the consent calendar. Matters on the consent calendar are considered routine and approved by one person. Any item can be removed from the calendar if you request to deliver a council and may be voted on separately. You will have the minutes of the last meeting and your bill sheet with additions. I just have one minor correction that really doesn't make any difference, but on the minutes under new business, um, where Mrs. Stinson suggested coordinating this with our quarterly updated the comprehensive plan. I don't know if I misspoke or not, but we don't do it quarterly. It's twice a year. Twice a year by annual. I mean, it doesn't matter, but I don't want anybody to be looking for a quarterly. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a correction of the minutes. Tell me, did you know that? You're sure we're good to go. All right, with that in mind, I'll entertain a motion to approve uh, the minutes and the bill sheet. I'm going to ask me to so, uh, We have a motion from Mr. Knight and Ms. Stinson. Is that a second? Second. All, right. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed by like sign. Motion carries. Everything is approved. Town manager's report. <clears throat> Try to be brief tonight. Um, but I haven't a whole lot going on, as most of you know, with the, the cold temperatures. Uh, guys have been busy with that. We've had some some water breaks in town, and we've had several small ones. We haven't had any big ones yet, luckily. Um, wait till we get through this next heat, so-called forecasted heat wave. That's when we need to worry a little bit. Um, I just want to let everybody know that uh, we started noticing some noises, if you will, coming out of the town hall heat pump. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, I think they got it down. We got that looked into, and no, and, you, and you guessed it, uh, cannot be repaired. It's most likely going to fail, uh, according to Ronnie Ball, in the very near future. So we'll be getting some prices together for that within the next few weeks. Do we bid that out? Uh, we do. Okay. 
Um, and while I'm on that subject, uh, for several years now we've discussed replacing the windows in the town hall. Uh, for those of us who are in there every day, there's a very noticeable heat issue with the windows. And uh, I'm not joking, literally cold air flowing in during the winter. Mm -hmm. um, I think we should go ahead and get some estimates on replacing them as soon as possible, or at least by the spring. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like I would want to pay for the, the cost of the windows and the, and the energy savings. Of course, we've got funds in the line item for repairs and maintenance to town hall. So, with y'all's permission, I'll start getting some bids on that as well. Uh, do you need a boat or no? Just, uh, just, just, just let you know. It's just yeah. general maintenance. Okay. We're just cheaper coats or uh, windows. Yeah, the tail. Yeah. Well, I'm going to you 20% of the You'll also remember the discussion that I began a couple of months ago regarding the rural water supply, the raw water supply at Crystal Lake. Uh, John and Rico, I asked John to look into this a little bit, <coughs> contact the Department of Health to find out what our options were which he did, uh, he contacted a uh, consulting agency that the Department of Health has contracted, CHA Consulting, who's been contracted to assist localities with source water protection plans. This is a free service being provided through VEH. Of course, we plan to take full advantage of the program. Uh, John's coordinated a meeting we're meeting the 23rd to start the discussion. And just, just a brief statement from them. The objectives of the Source Water Protection Plan are to provide information about potential sources of contamination that could threaten your sources of drinking water. Recommend prevention, mitigation, and response measures to minimize impacts of known potential contaminant events and raise awareness of your community to the importance of protecting your source. So this is right down our line as to what we're looking into. Again, uh, that's no cost. And finally, I hate to keep saying it, but still no word on the tree situation at the Department of Aviation. Our license expires February the 15th. They are aware of that, as we are. And uh, we're supposed to be getting me an answer in the next couple of days. So, they issue our license. Yes. No. So, yeah. so how did them get back with you yet? He did. He suggested that they may want to get some free companies to come in and give us some bids, which you and I both know is a waste of time. That's going to be a lot more time. So twice at least the quote that we gave them for the tail to do it. So they should know that because they deal with us all the time. But hopefully the right person will say that and they'll say we will. Right. We're prepared to get going, knock them out, get it over with. And the, uh, the owners are fine with everything? They're fine. Any questions for the town manager? Yeah, I have one. Yes, sir. I'm not too sure about the the way this goes at the uh, with this building over there on the track of land. Um, was that barren, and then all of a sudden it was started to be developed? And if it was, when something's being developed, isn't there certain procedures that have to be followed and codes have to be met before they start digging? What are you, what are you talking? About? Crystal Lake. Oh, that's uh, so old. Yeah, county. County has has jurisdiction in that area. And but then why are we having issues with the with the lake? Because with runoff and stuff like that. Well, because we don't have any rights. We don't own the land around the lake. We only have rights to the water. Okay. So what we're trying to do is get some stuff in place. Yes, you can build a dock here, you can have your summer home here, whatever you want, but there are certain regulations that have to protect the, the source of water, the drinking water. But they don't take into consideration when they dig these, uh, whether the cesspools or whatever they're doing about seepage, that could eventually wind up? That's what we're trying to do. Okay. Exactly. All right. That's what we're going to be looking into. Thank you. Any other questions for the town manager?
There are no questions for the town manager. We'll go to the town attorney's report. <coughs> yes, thank you. Nothing new to report. Um, if you all saw my bill this month and the expenses, you know, there just wasn't a lot going on in December. So. Good deal. Thank you, ma'am. Any questions for the town attorney? As we no questions for the town attorney, we'll go to the mayor's report. In your package, you will find inserted a letter from the uh, superintendent of schools that uh, basically we have worked out uh, a resolution to the traffic problem down there where we don't have to provide a police officer for traffic control. Uh, we never had to patrol, uh, offer that before. That was something that was offered as a courtesy. Uh, due to a couple of officers nearly getting killed, uh, it's a two-man job because of the increase in traffic. It's now a two-man job, they say. We had two officers nearly get killed uh, by transfer trucks coming through there at uh, relatively high speed, or at least a truck. I'm not sure whether the transfer truck or not. Um, and uh, so we ceased doing the traffic control. We had some calls, and we told people that it was a county issue because it is a county issue. It's not any town group. And uh, we uh, engaged, I engaged the sheriff and the superintendent of the schools, and I said, you know, we need to work out something here because it is a problem. Uh, and uh, we will provide one body to support the sheriff if the sheriff will put a deputy down there during that time frame. And uh, the sheriff went down and saw the site, and uh, he does, did not want one of his people tied up very long down there. And, and uh, working with the school, uh, we have figured out a solution to where now the trucks, the buses will come out, and then we'll go to the right and come around out by Dave's Market. Sunnyside Road. Yeah, Sunnyside Road, which is a safer, uh, actually a safer intersection for them, apparently, because they can see better both ways. And it's just increased the safety all the way around for everybody. So that, that has been resolved. We no longer have to deal with traffic. Not that we had anyway. All right, second thing, Nativity Scene winners. The Wash Bucket Initiative is the first place winner of $100 for the nativity scene at the Crew Park. Really? Because, yes, I haven't written you a check yet, but yes. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> yes, ma'am. So, that because you, you, put a, you put a new scene out there, you put it out where everybody could see it, and uh, I know some other folks went in there and they did some touch-ups and things and added some lights, and it just became a community effort, and, uh, and it's, uh, it, by the, from the judge's perspective, it was uh, the one that really stuck out the most you know, it was visible. Uh, the Crew Baptist Church was second, so they're going to get 50 bucks. <laughs> and then the uh, Turner family comes in tied with second, and they're going to get 50 bucks because they Well, thank you very much. Show, so. Well, it's all right. I'll the get money you. will be put to a good cause. I'll, I'll get you a check. <laughs> it's in the mail. Trust me. I've <laughs> <laughs> heard that before. <laughs> hey, you can give it. It's a church. You can give it. Okay, I can do that. <laughs> So well, check Maybe that's the church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sure you make up the uh, So that, that is the so that that gist of the mayor's report. Other than we, uh, I hope everyone had as good a Christmas as we had and, and watching the grandchildren do. Actually, so Lynn Ellett is the one who lit that up. Okay. Lynn Ellett did a nice job. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your civic pride and doing what you do. Thank you, man. <clears throat> All right, with that in mind, we'll go to the uh, committee reports. The Infrastructure Committee, Mr. Sisk. Well, you pretty much said it all. <clears throat> I'll be keeping up with Tony and all of them and just water breaks and stuff like that. And everything else is okay. okay. Just a um, quick uh, suggestion or question, or I'm not sure how it's going to come out. Um, we've, since we've raised the uh, water rates to uh, for habitat businesses to cover the cost of um, water line replacement uh, so much each year. Um, do you think it would be a would be beneficial for us to start making a list of every water line and prioritizing and determining in what year which lines are done? We're already so, ahead of you on that. Actually, the town manager. Uh, one of the things that we discussed when we set up that uh, set up that fund also was to how do we get ahead of the game and that was for the town manager and Tony to identify where the majority of the breakages occur mm -hmm. and those will be on the priority list and we'll start replacing those as we can. So we have a list of every line? Uh, not every line, probably so the top five. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it, Tony, it's all here. Yeah, yeah. But well, it's, well, well, a lot of you guys know, but, you know, I understand. Yeah, but I mean, they, you, he's got the top five that uh, they okay. so and that's, uh, once you get beyond that, then we'll go to the next five. And, 
put them on down the list. We try to do a block a year. Wait, I don't know. Oh, still, still mm -hmm. I'd like to just know it all to project it out sure. to see. Mm -hmm. And having having that institutional knowledge in one person mm -hmm. isn't always the best way to do things. No, I agree. Good. I agree. You need a list. I mean, right. it's, it's, good, it's good for past death purposes. So uh, the town manager will develop a working list that can be updated, modified, sit in a spreadsheet or something that we can, that we can go to. Thank great. you. All right. Finance committee, Mr. Knight. Thank you. All right. Personnel committee, Ms. Simpson. I just Simpson. thank okay. our um, employees for working out in this cold, cold weather. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big time. Volunteer services, Mr. Foss. Nothing to report. Thank you, sir. Economic committee. Uh, a few things, Mayor. All right. Um, <laughs> Uh, you should all have a letter in front of you to, um, that's actually a letter to Delegate Wright and Senator Ruff. Uh, General Assembly session starts in about 36 hours, give or take. Um, and in his budget, uh, outgoing Governor McAuliffe included $7.5 million for the Virginia Grocery Investment Fund. As you'll recall, uh, the town crew was one of the um, early supporters of the VGIF. Uh, and there are uh, two bills in General Assembly this year, Senate Bill 37 and House Bill 85, um, which create the Virginia Grocery Investment Program and Fund to provide funding for construction, rehabilitation, equipment upgrades, or expansion of grocery stores, small food retailers, and innovative food retail projects uh, to fund the bills in underserved communities. Um, this is just a letter expressing our continued support for both those Piece of legislation and the seven point five million dollars included in the uh, governor's budget. Okay. So at this time, so we need a motion, please. Okay. Uh, so I move that we um, send this letter to Delegate Wright and Senator Ruff. All right. Second. Second. All right. All in favor? Any discussion? All in favor? Say aye. 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 All opposed? By like sign. Motion carried. Uh, can you send this to us? Sure, uh, absolutely. Yeah, um, soft copy and we can stick it into a... Perfect. In fact, uh, I think Tiffany has it in pretty much. Okay. Can you put it on the town letterhead? And have you got my electronic signature? Yep. I can send it to you or you can send it to me. I can slap it on. I'll send it to you. Okay. Right. <laughs> I don't want to have anybody's signature, even my own at times. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't work on checks. All of my wife's works on checks. <laughs> All right, anything else, Mr. Miskin? And that is it for economic development. All right, good enough. Then we're going to continuing business. We're going to continuing business, anybody wishes to bring it up. All right, then we're going to new business. And I have one new business item that I did not stick on there. But we have had a complaint uh, apparently expressed about the road behind Crew Village Apartment. Uh, the town manager was researching that, and it's my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's my understanding is that the town crew never opened up that alleyway as a street. It's, it's been surveyed as a street, but as you know, we have lots of streets in town that are surveyed, but not opened or developed. Um, I guess the question is, do you want to incur the cost of opening it to fix it? Not, we will continue to patch it. Number one, I don't think we have the funds available to, to do that, or we don't have them all allocated for this year. Yeah. That would be a line item that we'd have to yes, address sir. on the next year's budget. Yes, sir. Absolutely right. Number two is I think the people that the people that put that crew village apartments in are the ones that asphalt that all the way through. I get behind the grocery store, I don't know. Okay. Okay, Crew Village Apartments are the ones behind the old start. Star yeah. Okay. I use that really all the time. Uh -huh. the, uh, I think the Star Value may have done it at one time also because I know some of their trucks came in there for loading and unloading. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just bringing it to your attention. Uh, are we patching it? Are we fixing it? We, we, have, we, we, have, we, we have, have patched it on it. occasion. Well, if we stop fixing it, then. Yeah, people, the bottom line is that this first grant is going to cost us a little over 19000 so less than twenty. Right. All right, and we have to have that before we can go to phase two. Well, 
Yes, the, the, the phase two of the VBA, yeah. their phase one and phase two are, that there's phase one and phase two within phase one of VBAF. Phase one A and phase one B. Basically, it's phase one A and B. Okay, right. all right. All right. So we're looking at 20,000, roughly. And we have to have that to move to phase two, which is the asbestos removal. We know that's going to have to happen, whether we knock it down or not. You know, whether you rebuild it, you still got to, you still are going to get stuck with that bill. Uh, I am hearing, uh, I think I'm hearing that people understand that we probably need to do phase one. Um, even if we put a new roof on it, we would still have to do the asbestos removal. So, uh, so the, the I guess what's the pleasure of council? Is there a motion that, that we authorize out of our fund, which fund is that? Derelict building. Yeah. building Fund, up to $20,000 to pay for phase one, our match? I've got a, a, another question real quick. Yes. I don't want to get too wrapped around. Oh, that. that's fine. This is good. We had a, you said we had a quote at one point in time to get the asbestos removed and it was 60000 mm -hmm. Why do why do we have to? Couldn't we? In the long run, would it not? Are we going to spend more than sixty thousand going through the whole grant process? And and what are we going to get out of it as opposed to where we just spend the sixty thousand dollars to get the investors taken out of it and do it ourselves? That's a good question. And fix the roof. And fix the roof. Got it in the market book. I think that building could be used for all kinds of things that could be positive for the town. Sure. How much money are we going to be putting out to go through this whole grant process and everything, as opposed to just getting asbestos out of it for $60,000 and, and fixing the roof? I, I mean, ideally, if we get the TAP grant, are we coming out ahead more. with these grants? I mean, because that, yeah, well, that's the question, I guess. Right, so the, the original plan was to wait and see if we got the TAP grant mm -hmm. and use the TAP grant. We can still wait to see if we get the TAP grant, um, but that would delay everything by a couple of years. And whatever other grant funding is available, we wouldn't be able to apply for it because we'd have to, unless we want to pay for our match out of pocket. My question is, how much are we? How much money are we coming out of pocket, even with the grants? And then what are we getting out of it versus with the grants? And this is. Just my understanding of it, the 19750 and the uh, 3500 that we've already paid. And then the but that could change if there's right. other grants that they think we should apply for where there's a little bit extra that we can't use leverage, or if we don't get the TAP grant. If we don't get the TAP grant, then I don't know if we can afford everything, if that makes sense. Well, that, that does make sense. So the twenty, the twenty is only for planning. You know, and that's guarantee you that the follow-on is there, which means we'd still have to spend the sixty for the asbestos removal. So the question that's been tossed on the table is, why don't we just go ahead and spend the sixty for asbestos removal and whatever it costs us to put on a new roof and just bypass the grants altogether? So that's the other alternative. Or, well, it's not really the only alternative. Is the roof going to fall in between now and next year? I mean, if we're not really, you know, being derelict if we are taking measures towards fixing the problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, I would have to have the building. Uh, we could ask the building inspector to go up there and look at it. I guess, and that would be that would be the first thing that we can do. Um, I don't know that the, it's going to collapse. It's it's. Um, you said it's concrete. I think it's so it's right. probably not going to collapse. But if you disagree. <clears throat> Just leaking, and what that means with concrete roof, I'm not really sure. But that's a problem. With this but the buildings are seems like we're kind of put under a, a real time constraint here, and then it's like we could we could spend we could we could waste some money trying to meet this time frame. And now, then, what what we could do, and I don't think it would hurt time frame too much, is wait until February and possibly invite her in profit or Sharon. Sharon's probably a little, a little bit cheaper for our. Sure. Um, to council, so we can ask the experts the questions. Explain it a little bit. Right. 
Okay, well, if we do that, that will give us time to get to engage the building inspector and get some bids on, on uh, putting in a new roof, if that's what's required. If it's required, then it'd be required. Uh, if he Why determines that it's... Rail? Pardon me? Well, how much is riding on this tap? Yeah. Yeah. So what? Uh, how much is riding on this tap rate, period, for whatever it is we want to do? Um, if we want to do it all for... But, I mean, it... I would say that everything in that park is that's currently right. riding on the tap So there's no guarantee we're going to get the tap break. That's correct. I suppose we don't. Exactly. Then you're out $20,000. Yeah. Right. right. Plus that's the 3000 yeah. All right. All right. Unless... I'd like to take it in steps, even if it means a delay of a year. What's a year? That's what I spoke my question. Yeah, but what, what, what if we got planned for the geodetic buildings for um, this year, we know the, the theater. There's one we, we've got. Well, you could call it last year's uh, funding and carry it over more or less. We've got a couple more. We know of one more. So you're probably looking at least what? Well, 20 is a good round number per unit. All right. So you're looking at 40,000 at least. Yeah. If we pursue those. And in fact, if we if we do delay until February to have her problem come, we should set the meeting with Sharon and Earl beforehand, just so we can explain to them everything that we want to do and see how they can because they put asked us together. I think, if I'm not mistaken, feel they wanted a resolution as soon right. as possible. Yeah, right tonight, but that's because of timing. Okay, so what we're going to do then is table this. Uh, this is what I'm hearing. It's consensus. But table it to request Hurt and Profits expert to come here for the next meeting in February to brief us and answer questions and, and brief us on details. Unless we have a special meeting. I was going to suggest could we have a special meeting just for that purpose? We, we could. If, I, I mean, I guess if, if we can find out what their time frame is, if they can wait until February, if not, they have a special meeting. Second item is that we get three bids for roof repair if that's needed, but before we even get that effort done, we need to get the building inspector out there to take a look at the roof and tell, give us his expert opinion. Do we need a new roof, yay or nay? Uh, if we don't, then we don't really need three bids. There may be some other water mitigation or damage mitigation thing that we can do uh, if, if it's leaking. We know it's leaking. I mean, we were over there. But, but the roof is wide open, too. There's a, there's a, like a Frankenstein castle type of... Uh, Big thing that you flop open, and if it's wide yeah. open, the youngster closed it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. That is the consensus that I'm hearing. Is that, I mean, is that right? Okay. All right. Good. Then we'll move on to the next topic. Anything else, Mr. Miskell? Um, just a quick question: Did we change parking in Indiana Road, or has that always been no parking? It's always been no parking. Yeah. Okay. Well, no. No. Officially, no. It is now. Okay. Be not in the. Okay. Good enough. I drove down the day and uh, was, yeah. was going to park. I never used to park on any of those never, It never was said you couldn't, but yeah. now they do. Now okay. yeah, you can't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you cannot. Uh, big brother for you. That's all I've done there. All right. Mr. Knight. Hey. Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Stephen. Mr. Boss. No, I think we should all try to think of some things that we can do with that building in the, you know, in the, end, in the end game. Mm -hmm. okay. why, why make a brokerage place there? Yeah. I think it makes great office space. There's a place in Franklin that took a, a building semi, you know, kind of like that, and they turned it into, you know, office space that people could use, and it was a huge success. I don't know if we have enough people around here that will be able to take advantage of it, but I mean, it's all. I'd like to see it turned into a what's called a maker space. So it's a big, big open space where people can go in and do their handicraft and things like that for either a fee or for free. And what we can do is set a special meeting that's going to generate revenue. Do you know what it's going to cost to upgrade the electricity? The right. electricity? Because that's going for There you go. Right. Well, that'll be something we I, I, I don't know. know. We, we, have, we have to still play it. Yeah. 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 If, yeah. What we can do, <laughs> what we can do is meet at Mary and and discuss this in greater detail. Yeah. Now, uh, public comment. 
Do we have any public comments? Yes, ma'am. The building. Yes, ma'am. In response to you, could be couldn't a portion of it be used for the police department? Everyone always talks about building a new police department. If that building gets renovated and whatnot, couldn't that be? has been? You know, seem like that has been considered. Yeah, and also been thought about putting a restaurant in the top and have a place where people can stand and look at trains because apparently there's a lot of train aficionados out there. And they like you know, you know that, that would I I well, could venture well, a long time on that type of thing, but another time. Um, this wallpaper yes, thing in here. Um, I just kind of whispered to Phil, do you think this is something that maybe the wash bucket could look at? Wash bucket people? Um, because this is not a major ordeal in here. But I'm sitting here looking at it with what construction experience I have, which is limited and not limited. Um, seems to me like it would be wise to take the time for somebody to come over and see just how easy this is going to be to peel off. You know, because sometimes wallpaper just peels right off. But if that's block underneath there, do you want it sheetrocked over? Do you want it just paint it? Do you what? What's the end game? Because this looks like it's been sheetrocked here to be painted on. Um, but I never even noticed it until you said it tonight. There is there has to be a brick back there. You can see it. Yeah, you can see it all over now that you've mentioned it, but. To me, it looks like that wall has been sheet marked. Well, that has that's to be. That's, yeah. that's sacred over there. Well, right? I, under, I understand. <laughs> that I, no, no, what I'm saying is, yeah. but do you want this sheet rock? If you want this sheet rock, then that would probably be a bigger project. That would probably be too large of a project for the wash bucket people. But if taking the, removing the wallpaper and cleaning the walls up and, re, and painting it neatly, that is certainly something I think that. So we can take to the committee fun. and see if this yeah. is something we would be willing to undertake. Taking wallpaper down isn't that hard. It's just a pain. I've done it. I can. Well, some can well, get all this down in a day. Well, well some yeah, wallpaper can be miserable to take down, and some can so not be miserable. Well, I think that, that where we were before is where we are now. We first need an right. estimate to see what what we've got. So different estimates for different options. This call contract. But once again, I'm I'm saying that this is something that the wash bucket. People might be willing, might be able and willing to undertake. And then it wouldn't cost the town anything. Yeah, we'll take that. Uh, we'll take that under advisement as we move forward on this. We do pretty good work. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right. Any other public comment? With that in mind, uh, I need about a thirty-second executive session, or what do they call it? Yeah, executive closed session. session. Yeah, closed session. Either way. Yeah, for a section five uh, yeah, second half, yeah. property of prospective business. Mayor, I move that we um, go into the second session pursuant to 2.2-3711A5 um, property and prospective business. Okay. Who was the second? Second. 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 All in favor say aye. 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 Can you pause my like sign? All right. At this time, I need to go around and uh, certify that we discussed in executive session what uh, what we went in executive session for, which was uh, property and uh, potential new business. Mr. Miskit. Yes. Mr. Yes. Knight. Mr. Knight. Yes. Mr. Hanson. Yes. Mr. Yes. Foss. Mr. Sisson. Yes. Mr. Reed. Yes. All right. All certified. Do I need to make a motion at this point? Mm -hmm. uh, no. Okay. All right. Good. I did want to just bring up, uh, I went to the, uh, the county's FOIA. Um, when we come out of executive session, we just have to come out. There is no vote because you can't vote on anything in executive session. Exactly. So you can't vote to come out of executive session. Okay. Oh. You can so, vote to go in, but you can't vote to go out. Correct, because all votes have to be taken out of executive session. Well, you do have a motion to, to go out and a second, even though you're not having a vote, right? No. You just go out. You just go out. Go out. Okay. But you serve time. Exactly. Okay. Gotcha. With, so that mind, motion motion motion. with that in mind, I'll With that in mind, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Nobody <laughs> <laughs> hand wants me for me. Mr. Knight, Mr. Jensen, second, I'll take it. Second. Second. All right. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 aye.